18. In my 18 wheeler, Peggy Sue. Taking time out of my busy schedule to speak to the youth in uh, Iligan City, Philippines, but also to you, the world. I've been asked to do a few moments on evangelism and discipleship. Well, for years and years, I've been known as the evangelist guardian angel. Guardian angel, the truck driver, the trucker evangelist. Look us up. Jerry W H U L S E and Google my name and on YouTube put Trucker Evangelist adding to my name. I was up most of the night and mind you there's not much heat on this truck in eight degrees below zero near the Wisconsin line. My diesel heater under the bunk quit working so I had to rely on a little small ceramic heater but God uh, has blessed me to not get uh, sick and I've asked him Lord what can I leave with these young people and I do believe at the end of this uh, telecast that God is going to make himself tangibly known like he has so many times. I'm believing him for that. To begin to talk about evangelism and discipleship, the Greek word for disciple means to teach. And how can you evangelize and how can you make disciples? When Matthew 28 chapter And 18, 19, and 20. Well, let's go to 17 because it really brings something into vernacular view. And mind you, I've driven uh, most of the day and, and uh, delivered and picked up and now on my way to Missouri. So it said in the 17th verse of the 28th chapter, of Matthew and when they saw him they worshipped him but some doubted 18 and Jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth 19 Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. He clarifies that teaching now with teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Young people, I like to take that little verse out of vernacular right there where he said, Lo, I'm with you always. Uh, when they've offered to pay my way across the waters into other nations, I said, Jesus said, Lo, I'm with you. <laughs> what can I leave with you? <clears throat> well, that's a good question. First of all, Evangelizing and discipleship are two different things. But one thing that I want to leave with you is that you've got to believe in your product. And in order to believe in your product, you have got to experience your product. And experiencing your product, then you'll have a commitment to your product. And I'm talking about the Lord. It's not just getting born again. Back when Jimmy Carter come into office, he said, I'm a born again Christian. Hollywood, let their soaps be born again. 
born again soap. No, it's more than being born again. It's having a relationship with God. It's having that experience with God. Getting to know Him and being committed to the cause. Discipleship is really, and uh, excuse me, but uh, I've got to uh, start the truck. Home. Messaging. The lights went out. Me. Discipleship is what you have learned in your experience with God and you pour that into somebody else. It's teaching. You might say, I'm young. I really don't know what I want to do in life right now. They've asked us in school, what do I want to become? Jerry, if I could be truthful with you right now, I really don't know. That's okay. God already foreknew you before he started creation. He already knew that what you were going to be born into, who your parents were going to be. He already knew what the call upon your life was going to be and what your purpose was going to be for allowing you to be born to be here on this planet. Life has a way of steering you toward that purpose. God allows things to come our way. I know, as for me, I didn't have much of an earthly father because he was a genius. His mind was a genius, and he didn't think I could ever be what he was. He, he, didn't, he, he didn't give time to his family, but yet he would help his fellow man. Some of you watching this right now, you may have that same type of earthly father. Or you may not have a father. Something may have happened to cause you to lose your father. Or not to know your father. But God said he's the, modern, he's the model father. And he said he would be a father to the fatherless. Isn't that good? I grew up without my father, earthly father, teaching me how to hunt, fish, all these activities I love to do, but my grandfather took that place. What are you getting at, Jerry? You got a divine purpose. If you'll look at the men that God called to be the first disciples, they were misfits. Some were unlearned. Others were rugged. One was a physician. The other was a tax collector. But they were misfits. God's looking for the misfits. God's looking for quality, not quantity. Even in watching this video, you may discover there's gifts within you that will be activated. When you met God, there was something birthed on the inside when you accepted Him into your heart and life. It begins to grow, but it's not seen. There's gifts laying dormant. Because God foreknew you. And he knew what your purpose was on this planet. And what he chose you to be. And fulfill that purpose. 
Now, you got to realize when you became intimate with God, something was birthed in you. And although it can't be seen, it's being protected by God. And at the right time, it's going to come forth and give birth. God chooses those that really don't have any power to produce life of their own substance so that he can make himself strong through them that he would be glorified and not flesh. How did I know I would be a truck driver? God steered me that way through mechanics and then becoming a driver. Did I want to do that? It was fun at first, but look what doors it's opened for me. God chose that for me, and since he chose that for me and allowed me to meet uh, angels he sent my way on the road, he called me into the ministry, and there's been multiplied thousands of people saved, lives changed, entering the ministry, have a new outlook on life, a reason to live. <coughs> Excuse me. By me um, entering the Mexican. field of trucking. It's opened many doors. Look at that truck driver, preacher. Listen to him preach on the radio. Highway patrol stopped me going down the road listening to me preach on the radio, wanting to know if I have preaching tapes. Sirens blaring, blue lights flashing. You don't know what you've done. They want prayer. They want tapes. They're excited about the truck driver, preacher, that they heard preaching on the radio. I'm here to help you discover your purpose. Since I've been called into the trucking industry, called into the ministry as a trucker minister, I've also become a trucker disciple uh, for God. I'm able to pour what God poured into and into me into somebody else. And how do you evangelize? He said, go into all the world. I am in all the world. My books are all over the world. But how did I know that was going to happen? Because of the avenue of trucking. God chose for me to open doors of opportunity to evangelize. Take what God gave me, the good news from a far country, the gospel, and take it on 18 wheels all across our nation's highways. I can be 600 miles away in one day or one night with the gospel to get somebody that needs a word. That's where it's at. You spend time with God. And you pray, I've got 13 minutes already on the clock, a little over. And you pray that God would give you a word for somebody in due season. You don't have to give them the whole Bible. Give them a word. A word that comes to your heart and your mind. That's evangelizing. Now, you pour into somebody else, that's discipleship. You teach them what God and others have taught you. That's discipleship because it multiplies. And it spreads. Then the gospel is not only being spread by Jerry, but it's being spread by people reading Jerry's books. It's being spread by drivers that's been touched by Jerry's ministry. That's evangelism. There's a woman, i got to hurry, went to a class on soul winning and she 
passed that class and they gave her an opportunity to go out into her community and witness to a young couple. I'm just a little bit over 15 minutes. Can I buy two? Anyway, she forgot all the scriptures when they had had a little bite to eat and a, and a drink and it was her time to witness to that couple. She forgot everything she learned, but she started crying. When she started crying, God came on the scene. That couple started crying and saw that she was in a dire predicament and the Spirit of God came on the scene and they were introduced into the kingdom of God by her crying, by her humbleness. The Spirit of God came on the scene and when He comes on the scene, then our flesh strips away and we see God for who He is. She didn't have to know the Roman road. She didn't know all of sin and come short of the kingdom of God. It's appointed unto man once to die and after this to judgment. She didn't know the soul that sinned shall surely die. She didn't know that he said, I've come that you might have life and had it more abundantly. She didn't know the Roman road as many as received him gave he them power to become the sons of God. She didn't know. For with the heart may believe it's unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is unto salvation is made unto salvation. She didn't know none of that, but she cried hundreds into the kingdom of God after that just by her humbleness. God will take your little and make it something. Give him a chance, young people. No, you don't know what you want to do. You don't know what you want to be. And I'm, and I'm not here to tell you either that life is going, I'm 62 years old. Life is going to be good to you. Life has a way of giving us a curve. Relationships will fail. Marriages will sometimes fail. Mortgages will fall, fail. Things on this earth will fail. But one thing that will not fail is the Word of God. It remains true. That's why I believe what I'm giving to this lost, dying, and hurting world. I believe in what I'm presenting. It changed my life, and it can change their life and it can change your life. Father, in Jesus' name right now, honor this, God, as you have so many times down through the years in the truck stops, in the chapels, in the churches. Let the winds of heaven begin to blow in the hospitals, in the cars, in the nursing homes, in the churches, in the Philippines, in China, in Russia, wherever this is viewed, God, in India, in Ethiopia, wherever it's being viewed, in Nigeria, hallelujah, I feel the Lord. God, make yourself tangible right now to these young people. Let the winds of your spirit begin to blow. Begin to make yourself known in the world, wherever this is being played, God, right now. I'm stretching forth my hands and believing, God. They don't need to see. I give it to you. Adam, I give it to you, God. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Begin to move with your spirit, God, throughout where this is being played. Move, God, move, move, move. I thank you for it. I feel it. I feel your divine presence. Hallelujah. My, 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 Sister Ten in the Philippines right here on camera with me. Do you begin to feel that touch? Do you feel that power of God being released? Oh, reach out and grab a hold of it. He's making himself known right now. In the name of Jesus, Bishop Villister and bishops and ministers of the gospel, uh, doctors of divinity, I thank you for this opportunity to speak to these young people today. I thank you, God, that you're moving on the scene right now. Wherever this video is played, I thank you for it right now. In the name of Jesus, even bodies are being healed right now. Even the touch of God is touching these young people like he did me at eight years old. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. When my Bible began to turn pages by itself and scare me half to death, 
God, thank you for making yourself known. Raise up disciples. Raise them up to go into evangelism, leaving a tract somewhere, God, that for somebody to find looking for a reason to live and some hope to come into their life. I thank you for it right now. In the name of Jesus, that's it. That's it. God bless you. I had Sister Ten from the Philippines that's over the international ministry on the line watching. Thank you, God. I feel the Holy Ghost. The same power that raised Jesus, I feel right now quickening our mortal bodies. He is in the midst of us. He's ever with us. As many as believe gave he them power to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. I didn't know I was going to. I'm trying to quit. I'm trying to quit. Glory to God. But he said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be in the midst. I give these people to you, God, wherever they might be, in whatever condition they might be, and especially these young people, God. Call them out, God, and call them into your work of discipleship and evangelism in Jesus' name. That's it. God bless you is my prayer.